Hello and welcome to our Excel Basic to Advanced course. Today we're going to show you how to really add value to your spreadsheets. Um, firstly, we're going to explain um, what we call the ribbon. This is the big menu. Um, there's different tabs. We're going to focus on this home tab for today, um, mostly focusing on basic formatting. And that will stay within the confines of this little rectangle that I just traced with my mouse. All right. Um, so the first thing to, to basic formatting is text formatting. How can we change um, how this text looks or appears? The first trick we could use is bold. That increases the line weight of the cell value. Italic gives it a little, um, a little shift, underline. And then strike through is very similar to underline, except the line would strike through it. Sadly, we don't see it on this quick menu. So when in doubt, right click on a cell, bring up a menu, this is format cells, and we're formatting the font. Looks like there's a couple effects right here. We want to use strike through to show what it can do. This is a little preview of what it will look like. You could also use um, superscript and subscript for your scientific notation and exp exponents. All right. <clears throat> so now, Excel is known to you know um, to be a powerful tool to analyze a lot of data. Data can uh, can look kind of messy to the human eye. Computers are a lot better at reading it. So borders help us digest it. So um, if you go to the border menu right here. You have a couple quick options. That's a skinny border. You got a thicker border right here. And say you want to have full control over the border. You don't want Excel to just decide. You go to more borders, very similar to that right click like I showed you on stri strike through, which is right here. Now what you're gonna do, you can select a border. You apply it to where need be. We'll even do a diagonal to show you the uh, versatility of borders. And there you go. Now you have a range of three different complete borders. You know, um, Excel looks nice in black and white, but sometimes colors really help um, you identify proper data, um, proper elements, etc., etc. Um, makes things stand out. So um, in this font menu, you pull down this text color, and it brings up a color menu. This is standard to Excel um, when it comes to, and I'll actually explain more, background, fill, shapes, etc., this is a standard color menu. So this is a palette they supply you with. You can go to more colors for kind of a deeper palette. And if you want to use your RGB formulas, you can mess around in here. You change the font to a bluish purple. We'll change the background just to a standard yellow. What else can we do? Okay, so as you see, this sheet looks a little bit um, made. The standard Excel sheet would look like this. How do we get it looking like this? Um, one important feature is zoom. So if you go to the bottom right, you can really change the scope of the sheet. You mix that with, I'll bring this over here. You mix that with the increasing and decreasing of font size. And you have full control of your Excel display. What else can we do with formatting? Alignment is a big thing. So it looks like right now, this text is justified to the left, standard. Um, I will do a test right here, test. And it looks like the text stays to the left. However, what if we want to get it to the right? That's when we go to this next little box called alignment. You see these little icons to help justify text? They're very powerful. Not only can you move left and right and center text, but you can also go up and down. Another powerful tool is called warp text. So if text is bleeding out of a cell, like this, as you can see, the text value is still in this cell. It just looks like it's over here at E. Um, you hit warp text. What that does is make sure that text stays within the cell. So you can bring this down. And that cell still has that same value. It's just not leaking into the other sides of the, um, the cells. Next we have merging cells. So as you can see, these are two cells being selected. What we can do is we can hit merge and center and make this one super cell. As you can see, the cell spans across F and G. Here we will show you the power, the, the real use for it. So typically you don't want to start merging cells if you're doing a big data set or analysis. It's more for presentation and tables. As you can see, this table is nicely tied together with this spanned header. One disclaimer is 
if you'd like to merge cells, but two cells have the value, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to sacrifice one of the values. Um, what they do is Excel keeps the left value or a top left value if you have uh, multiple rows or yet yeah, multiple rows selected. Um, all right, so it keeps the only left upper left cell value and discards others. Let's see what that does. Okay, all right, that works out. Um, like I said, you're not going to want to do this in big data sets, but when it comes to presentation and tables, uh, merging cells can be extremely, extremely useful. Next, we're going to go to number formatting. And just like we learned earlier, um, it's kind of hard to read stuff without borders. So let's apply some borders, center some text. Now we have a table we can start messing around with. Sadly, these sales numbers don't mean much to us. They're just numbers after numbers after numbers. How can, I, how can we identify with them a little bit more? So if we go up to the next box in the Home tab, you see a little comma. That comma allows you to break up the number every three values. Um, this makes financial reporting, any kind of report you present, a lot more digestible and easy to understand. We only sell whole units, so we're not going to need these decimals. So what we can do is we can use this feature right here. To decrease the number of decimals cost you know 200 299 what does that mean what we can do is we can now give this a currency value since we're in America right now we're gonna use USD they have many other options and formats and as you can see it adds the currency symbol to the left justifies the text all the way to the right and also adds decimals we're gonna leave those decimals because since um, you know, fractions of dollars on the long scale can really add up. Um, all right, so here's a fun little exercise. Um, you guys know the number pi. I'll show you a quick, quick little off topic. Um, you can insert symbols. You go to Greek, and we'll find pi. Where are you? Oh, I used it recently. I'm gonna take a shortcut. Okay, we used it recently, there's pi. So pi is roughly 22 divided by seven. As you can see, those decimals go to, go pretty far. Um, how can we get the precision less or more? By using these add or decrease decimals. However, what if we wanna display a percentage? So now we have, let's just say seven, uh, 22 7 divided by 22 all right so that looks like it should be about 32 percent as in decimal form how can we make this a easy to read fraction uh, easy to read percent up here in your number formatting you can use your percent you can also increase and decrease decimals to make it more precise lastly we're going to show you how to kind of really maneuver and move around the spreadsheet um, as you can see, these cells correspond to the values. What we can do now is we can show you how to insert a column. So what you do is you'd select this column and it's always going to insert to the left or above. Those are what um, Excel will default. So I'll hit insert and now it has shifted all the columns over. That can be very handy and useful. Next, you can do that for rows. Insert row. And I quickly did it before. But just as quick as you can insert, you can delete. So you right click and hit I or D. Um, you'll get used to these shortcuts. For now, I just advise you to use the insert delete. You can also do this for cells. So if I want to make this cell blank, not like this, I want to maintain the B1, B2, B3. Just use Control Z um, to undo. What you do is you click on the cell, right click, and hit insert. You have two options. You can shift cells to the right, and you could shift cells down. Or what you could do is you could do what we did before and shift the entire row and column. We're just gonna work on these individual cell and we'll shift them down. As you can see, it maintained this hierarchy, but now we also have free space to do what we wanted to do. My typing is horrendous today. All right, so now we're gonna delete this and shift the cells back up. We've maintained data integrity while being able to manipulate and move around data. That is super important. Um, you can also clear contents. So if you don't want to get rid of this whole row like that, but you want to get rid of the data in this row, 
what you can do is you can right click and hit clear contents. That covers it for today um, with basic formatting. Join us tomorrow to become a master with the math, self-referencing, and absolute referencing of Excel. This is really what gives Excel its power. Thank you, guys.